Do you remember the last no hitter you were a part of, Coach? Boy, I don't, but I very rarely remember what happened yesterday. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a long time. I uh, can't can't recall the last one, and and really kind of got caught up in just watching uh, Lopez and Gramacki go after it. I knew, you know, when we took Bryce out that he had the no hitter uh, intact, but you know, 98 pitches, he wasn't getting through two more innings, and it was the right time for him, but. Uh, it was just like just enjoying the way those two guys threw the ball, and then whenever guys started celebrating after the last out, I, I thought it was a little bit more than normal, and then I realized that it was a no hitter again. So, uh, but just I really proud of the way our pitching staff uh, threw the ball tonight. So you didn't know it was a no hitter? I, I knew it was a no hitter. I just wasn't really like the last out of the game. I wasn't like pumped up that we got the last out of the game. I was just I got caught up in watching uh, Nolan the way Nolan was throwing the ball and the way Lopez came in and threw the ball and. Uh, you know, if we he, if he could have just seen some signs, we you know we'd have got a shutout with that no hitter. So, but you know they they did a really good job, and Coach Crow did a great job of calling that game tonight. Did Bryce fight you at all to stay in the game? Not at all. I mean, Bryce Bryce is a very smart young man, and he knows uh, he knows what's at stake, and he understands. You know, you get 98 pitches, and you're only in your third start of the season, and a cool night. Uh, you know, he's he's well aware of, of why we would do that at that point. What was the scout at all tonight, and what was the attack for the pitchers? Well, it was just uh, we knew we were facing an aggressive team, and they were going to, uh, you know, they were going to get up there and get their swings in. And Bryce was very dominating. I mean, a fastball anywhere from 90, 95 to ninety nine tonight, and uh, was able to mix. Uh, he was able to use his change up enough, and then his slider was on. So, just being able to to use all of his pitches is is really the the main reason he was so successful through there and, and racking up. 12 strikeouts and the staff getting 16 on the night against a team that, you know, can swing the bat a little bit. Chad McDaniel got his first hit in a Mizzou uniform today. How was the team feeling about that? Yeah, I mean, Chad's a guy that they the guys like a lot, and they they were happy to see him get that hit. And uh, you know, he started pressing a little bit after his third at bat. And uh, but Chad's Chad's a good hitter, and Chad's going to be you know he's going to be part of this lineup, and he just has to get some at bats under his belt. And now that he's starting to, you know, he's healthy, he'll see more at bats. Are you thinking of anybody for a permanent DH role, or is that just going to be very? No, I think that's always flexible in our program. Of uh, you know, the DH is the guy that's swinging the bat the best, and 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 uh, you know, if if somebody jumps in there and they start swinging the bat the rest, the best the rest of the season, then it'll be their job. But you know, it's it's who's going to be uh, capable of producing really good bats day in and day out, and that's so, a lot. So you're going to move Brian Sharp to DH? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Brian's yeah. so valuable. I mean, he's playing great defense. Uh, he's doing a lot of things really well. So. Uh, just you know, the middle of our order today to see Cam. Cam's been working really hard this week and uh, has put in a ton of hours in a, in a batting cage, and, and it really looked like it paid off tonight. And it, it looks like I, like the guy that I know uh, that that's very capable of being that dominant guy right there in the middle of the order, and then Sharp hitting right behind him. Uh, you know, those two guys were really really a good thing tonight. How important was it that you didn't have to use a guy like TJ tonight? Got off to a big lead. Yeah, I mean TJ's sitting there, and we'll you know we'll use him later this weekend if if we need him. And uh, but you know really my my only thought I have right now is just watching Michael Plasmeyer go out and attack the strike zone and and get some early contact and and get us really deep into the game, and we can make that decision later in the game tomorrow too. Is there any change in, in approach or message for tomorrow? No, I think uh, you know w you look at the the overall game. We played a complete game tonight. I thought we did a really good job offensively. Uh, really good job runners at third base and and not getting greedy and the infields back and just taking the ground ball to second base and and picking up runs that way uh the only thing that i felt that uh that that we need to clean up a little bit is just some of the base running stuff that we did tonight uh you know we we can do a better job on the bases than what we did tonight do you see playing brian sharp more in the cleanup spot you know i think it's uh why brian's swinging the bat it's a good spot for him uh you know, and and it's you know my my order is I, I like to have an order that that's really set and each guy knows where they're hitting. I think there's some value to that, but uh, right now we just got a, a lot of guys playing some pretty good baseball and guys that you know deserving to be in a lineup. So it, it can be flexible, but you know the goal is to establish that lineup by the time we get to conference play. So just trying to see guys and see where they fit in best, but. Uh, the tough part about it is that just having, you know, when we get into conference play of having lefty lefty right there and making it easy for uh, the opposition to, to make a, a pitching change right there to go against Cam and Brian together. So, you know, it's not always the best. You know, what I want to see is Brett Bond get going so he can secure that spot. He did a great job in a four hole last year, and uh, and that really creates some issues when you separate Meisner and Sharp and, and 
get bond right there in the middle whenever he starts uh, swinging a bat like he's capable of.